Fueled by tacos, beer, and Bloody Marys, the only show featuring Baby Jesus with a nail gun, the pride of PA, and the show with the eye of the tiger, ladies and gentlemen, Punch Fire. My dog chewing a bone under on my couch. <sighs> My dog is a butt. <laughs> she is a butt. <clears throat> but I love her. Hey, friends. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Punch Farm. I am your uh, slightly upset host, Mark Sheets. I'm here with Alicia. Hello. I'm here with Nikki. Hey. I'm here with Mark Dose. <laughs> and just before I hit uh, record, my dog takes her big ass bone jumps on the couch and proceeds to start chewing it like she owns the joint. <laughs> yeah, she's going to steal it right there. Uh-huh. No, nope, oh, nope. she knows she oh, gets And slapped. we have to give her her chew toy <laughs> for the podcast. <laughs> Otherwise, hey, are you going to be a butthead? No? There you go. <laughs> uh, if, if I don't give her a chew toy, she, uh, she'll she bark throughout the uh-huh. episode. Yeah. But for some reason, I gave her the bone. She ran over and jumped on the effing couch like she owned everything. <laughs> I know. It was crazy. She knows she's not allowed on that couch. She thought she, she knows. Get away with it. Uh, yeah. yeah. The she thought, oh, they're not paying attention to me. I'm going to get on the couch. Yeah. I got this bone and they don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we started our day uh, with a couple beers at Funk Brewing. Yep. And speaking of Funk Brewing, this weekend, uh, or last weekend, God knows when you listen to their episode, mm-hmm. but I was on the episode of No Sleeves Brocast yeah. with uh, Norm and Ryan from Funk, Funk. Brewing. Uh, we recorded in the basement, and uh, it was awesome. Was they the, fed me beers. Yeah. Was the uh, fridge buzzing in the background? The no, time? no, no. Yeah. I, set their, I set their equipment up. Oh, uh, nice. This is their best sounding episode. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, we'll just go right back down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I mean, I took control of the show. Norm kept yelling at me. He's like, quit driving my bus. I'm like, someone's got to teach you how to do this right, dude. <laughs> <You're, laughs> no, I'm just You're going to have to cut the sleeves off of your shirt and be the third ah, well, podcast maker. I wouldn't mind, but I showed up with double sleeves. Because I was like, they were it's like, this cool is no there. sleeve podcast. Well, but I was like, no. I'm Punch Farm. I'll do my own thing. Mm-hmm. So I had double sleeves. But I feel like Norm put a sweatshirt on eventually. So he the whole did. no sleeves thing down in the, in the chilly, haunted Oaks. basement of Funk Brewing, yeah. it only lasted so long for, uh, for the big guy. Yeah. He, had, he had to get warm again. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Ryan, on the other hand, he, went. he stayed no sleeves the whole night. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. But uh, these guys just started this podcast. It's called the No Sleeves Broadcast. They were uh, kind enough to have me on uh, episode five, and they got me to tell stories. They got me to talk about my one and only kickboxing match <laughs> in the Schlitz Malt Liquor Raging Bull Kickboxing Tournament I was in. <laughs> no. Uh, I came, what? Yeah. I showed you the trophy, right? No. I don't think I'll, so. I'll get it out for you. It's, it's, <laughs> th- th- okay. There's a silver uh, karate guy mounted on a malt liquor uh, uh, Schlitz beer can. <laughs> it is the classiest trophy oh, ever. Oh, yeah. Oh boy. Uh, and 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 <laughs> you can read it. It says runner up. Obviously I lost. So but that's a song. that's a nice Bummer. way to say and how many were that's in a nice it? way to say loser, I guess. Maybe uh maybe we can get you a trophy for curling. I wanna be, I wanna yeah. curl. And, and I'm not talking about free weights in the gym like Norm. Got curl, yeah. Oh, um, Chris. We were uh pre gaming at Funk with a tasty beer and on the television is uh, winter sports. Yeah. But that yeah. curling, when they throw that big weight down the lane. The stone. And right? then it's a couple stone. people. It's a stone. It's a stone. Yeah. And then some dudes with brushes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this Love case, it. it was the uh, women's league. Uh, and they were just sweeping the shit out of that ice. And I guess they're guiding yeah. the uh, stone, the I curling really stone. I really don't understand. Yeah. yeah they, I they're don't like cutting it, right? grooves into the ice that would make the stone spin and, and turn it. No, like I, know, I know. But I just don't. I don't get it. Do you ever right, play uh, shuffleboard? No. Yeah. Uh, it's like the same thing, but on ice. And bigger. And bigger. Now, I, my theory was, yeah, it's like brilliant. some people are like, why is this even a sport? And I'm like, because it was invented by a bunch of dudes that just couldn't skate. Hmm. They loved hockey. They loved the ice. 
they just couldn't skate. So they're like, well, we'll just get in the ice with our sneakers in, in this broom and we'll throw this rock down there. Watch, I bet you curling goes back farther than hockey. It, oh, it probably, probably. Does. For sure. But I'm, 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 I feel like we started by some guys sports, that wanted to so. do something fun and drink at the same time <laughs> on the ice. That's you A know, bunch of dumbasses. Well, <laughs> hey, our Canadian listeners, if you know, let us know. Yeah. Um, if not, uh, that's my theory. It's a bunch of dudes, couldn't skate well, wanted to drink beer, but have some competition. So they came out with curling. <laughs> right. And that's why I think we could be <gasps> a very the bestest, most co-ed, <laughs> most kick-ass curling team The Punch ever. Farm curling team. Yeah. Uh, I don't sports. But it's... But it's PFC team. But it's not the sport <laughs> that you're seeing on TV. It's not ball sports. This is like, we could definitely drink beer and throw this oh fucking God, brick yeah. down the lane. Yeah. And then I could broom it and I'll be like, good Stop job, Nikki. High five. That. And then we'll drink Stop it. Again. <laughs> you did like my. Every time you do the motions, it just doesn't look yeah. good. Is it because it <laughs> it's pointed toward my mouth? <laughs> okay. I guess oh, you, man. you could probably paint your own picture, listeners. <laughs> sorry about short it. I'm sorry. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right that we are short and tight? <laughs> we have no Olympics this coming up this summer, right? Right, but and apparently then 18 will be winter in Russia. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's in Russia. I think it's yeah. in Russia in 2018. Yeah, which we'll see curling then. Well, that's uh, that's why it's on TV right now. I guess it's a bunch uh, of competitions uh, leading yeah. the whole way. Which is so weird because here in PA it's like seventy four degrees. I know it was so beautiful today. So watching uh, Winter oh. Olympics uh, or prelims yeah. seems so weird. But I guess it's like living in Florida where it's always hot as balls. Mm. Where Mark's going. Yeah. And I bring that up too because yeah, uh, there was a there's a podcast down in Florida called Ugly in the Morning. Uh, they had reached they had reached out and said, hey, would you move down? Uh, Check connect us out. with them. Yeah. Maybe they can uh, you know. Put you in the right direction for for jobs or for some fun for excitement. Even just hanging out with them. Uh, super awesome dudes. Uh, I mean, we don't know them, but they seem super awesome. Yeah. yeah. But they gave us a shout out in their podcast, and I think they uh, even gave they you a, li- a little words of advice. <laughs> uh, Florida, I'm going to play. Uh, yeah. Guys, I hope you don't care. Ugly in the morning. I'm going to play your podcast clip here. Quit on ours. I hope you don't care. Um, but it was cool. I mean, yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, they're they're they seem like really cool people. Um, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately, they're losing one of them who is actually moving from Pennsylvania down here to Florida. <laughs> oh God, why? Why would we do that? <laughs> why would we do that? Because we make poor decisions. That's we what do. this show is all about: is poor decisions. <laughs> Florida is one big poor decision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, either way, um, you know, if you like us, which you shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> Check out the other another podcast uh, called Punch Farm. They're they're on, they're uh, on Google Play and iTunes. Uh, yeah, we're everywhere. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks uh, so much. Ugly in the morning. Uh, go f- go check them out. Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play. Uh, guys, thank you. And Mark, I think their advice is, is spot on. <laughs> what are you thinking? Are you sure you're gonna do this? <laughs> yeah, I'm not backing out now. I know. I'm gonna keep Don't asking leave you. me. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but I'm in a, I have no uh, contract on a lease or anything like that for my apartment, so who knows? Maybe it'll be three months of hell, and I'll be like, I miss my friends and family. Right. And come back. Aww. Aww. Or it'll who's be five gonna, years of heaven. Who's going to go to Taco Bell with me? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Not me. We're not. Yeah. We're going to have to find someone else. You'll find, you'll find somebody that can go to Taco Bell with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sad. Aww. I'm just oh, it'll be you. fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Live in the moment, you know? Yolo. Are we, are we uh, in episode 40? Is this episode no, 40? No, 39. 39. 39. Woo-hoo. Isn't it? Okay. 39. I thought 39 was last week. Oh, well, no, okay, okay. If, if you want to get technical, yes. <laughs> Technically, it's episode 40. Because episode, we the first thing we ever did was called episode zero. Uh, no, I'm not and it sucked that. so bad that I took it down. <laughs> <laughs> when when you post it on Monday, this is going to be 39. 39. That was cool such beans. a good movie, though. It was. I, we, Hush. Uh, we reviewed. I, know. I don't know why we're, now we're doing like It was like the like best a, movie, uh, too. In retrospect. Um, <laughs> yeah, good one. Yeah, Hush was a great movie, but we just didn't quite. And I think we drank too much. That Maybe that's what happened. Yeah. Mm. Probably. We were back then. We, we drank were nervous a and we didn't really know what we were doing. I'm sure it was so. good. 39 was episodes fine. with Mark. Oh, of course you were fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> no, <laughs> I probably said like, um, like probably uh, like, like uh, 47 <laughs> times <laughs> now. Uh, Fuck Mark, he's moving away. Okay, yeah. let's get the stuff that's more current and stick around here in Pennsylvania. Just kidding, man. I love you. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I was uh, on the No Sleeves broadcast. Yeah, we heard about that already. I know. Stop talking about you. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> Which leads me yeah. to Paranormal Punchers uh, show, another show that I do. <laughs> but I have a clip that Ryan from the No Sleeves captured. Uh, he captured an EVP <gasps> in the building oh. of Funk Brewing. Now, now listen to this. And I'm, I'm not making this up. You can go check out Paranormal Punchers episode four. <laughs> it says, sounds like nothing but a promo, but I'm very stoked about this uh, EVP. Now, listen to this. You guys tell me what you think. You just said a sweet word about that. Yeah. Someone whispers. You hear it? But it freaked Ryan out when he first heard it. I'll do it again. So you hear the woman's voice first. Oh, that, and then oh, oh, the video's jumping over. You just said a sweet word about that. And then you're like, yeah. 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 Do you, do you hear that whisper? Yeah. Hail or kill. Right. <laughs> no. Okay, wait. Do it one more time. One right, more ready, time. Ready, ready? After, after, uh, all right, because they were recorded in the basement, but the bar was still full. So you can hear some lady uh, get really loud. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's that whisper. And it wasn't, no, they swear up and down it wasn't them. It freaked them out when they were playing this back, uh, when they were editing their podcast together. You said a sweet word about that. Yeah. <laughs> you hear it? It's a little freaky, right? It it's really little... just, honestly, it sounds like one of them is breathing a little heavy into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keel over from all the beer I've been drinking. Yeah. I, I could be. No, I think that's that was pretty cool. Um, that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what that's what I did uh, this week. What about you, dude? Oh. I mean, I know, I feel like you're trying to. Uh, tighten up loose ends before you split next month. Yeah, yeah, I'm not thinking about it too much. Work's wrapping up nicely. I think that's what I'm most excited about this yeah. week. Uh, I got like 14 days left of work, and uh, it feels great. 14 <laughs> days, wow. pretty much. Oh, really five days advice. next week, two days after that, and then five more. So that's actually 12 days. I can't oh, quite okay. count. <laughs> uh, 12 days that I have to go to this job that I currently have, which I love it there, kind of. But I mean, uh, you sound like you're at the point where like. You're not. I am not sad. Like about, is your. It, it's mm -mm. really tough to use the word like right now. About yeah, no, job. I'm. I'm not sad at all to be moving on okay. from this, okay. this organization right moving now. Moving on to something else. Yeah, yeah, down the road maybe we'll be with them again, but I'm ready to be just not with them, and uh, that's my week. I've I've been loving life, and I don't know. Life's been. I don't know. I just watching Shameless still, like we talked about last <laughs> week. Life's boring. I just been watching Shameless, Aww. and uh, going to work every day. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. <laughs> not, not as exciting as, as your yeah. uh, as my ghost ghosts. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, you know, Alicia and I uh, booked our hotel for the Gettysburg Paracon. Yeah, Gettysburg. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna go down there for a couple of days to a, uh, a paranormal convention. Yeah. <laughs> When's that? It's in, in June. June. In June. You want to come Ooh, back? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm okay. He's like, no, I'm good. Right, well, I mean, I actually wasn't asking. <laughs> I, technically, I did ask, but yeah. whatever. Should be a blast. We could mm -hmm. take the. Uh, we thought about having a booth for the podcast, just to meet people and like interview them. I mean, yeah. it could be really rad. And hopefully, some big big names in the uh, biz come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like hopefully Jason Hawes from Ghost Hunters. Oh, That'd be rad. Yeah. Wow. And how many times have I used the word rad? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> what was in the beer at Funk? Uh oh. <laughs> Heaven. Some rad hops. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. What's up with you, Nikki? Yeah. We missed you last week. We did. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I missed you, too. <laughs> Do anything cool with the fam? Any games? No. Any parties? So, I don't know if I told you this, but I got a guitar. Yes. I was going to ask you. <laughs> yes. Um, I've always wanted a guitar. My dad got me a guitar. And I took it home, and my brother taught me a couple cool chords, but... That's about it. What I didn't get guitar? very far. It's just like a cheap chintzy guitar. Uh -huh. really and you brought it tonight to play for us? Uh -uh. Oh, no. no. Okay. No. Dang it. No. And honestly, like since last Saturday when I was at my brother's house, I haven't touched it. Touched it. Um. But I mean, I work two jobs, so true. A hard. And when I'm not working, I tend to make other plans. Like I had dinner plans. One night this week that I wasn't working, and the other night I went to the dentist. 
Oh, so, super fun. I don't hey, have so any, did I. I don't have any <laughs> cavities. I know. I went to the dentist. Oh uh, I'm the good 14th, too. No cavities. But... Well, we wait, 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 wait. We all went. Did you go this month? I went Monday. We've all been to the dentist in February. Yep. That yes. Is weird. Whoa. How many cavities? How many cavities? <laughs> Zero. None. Zero. Yeah. We are the healthiest podcast. The best hygiene ever. ever. Collectively, well, we are fantastic. At least the mouth. <laughs> the mouth. It must be all the beer we drink. Yeah. yeah I, I, no, I, I'm uh, here. Yeah. I agree. The acid in beer. It's because, no, it's because <laughs> you know me. That's really all it matters. Now, uh, so Nikki's going to learn to play guitar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I play bass. Like Mark saying, could play, well, you play the, the cello. He can play, play the cello in a band. It's a lame ass instrument. No, but I have a point I would like to bring up. Well, you got to take a piss? Where are you going? No, I was going to get a beer, but what's your point? Go get a beer. Okay. You can hear me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Mish can sing. Well, apparently Mark wants to sing. But like, we are forming a band right now. Ooh. This is awesome. Uh, but Lish and I were talking the other day. I don't know why we were talking. Oh, that's right. We were, tri- we were figuring out how to replace you. Thank you. Um, we were writing an ad so we could uh, see we get another uh, yeah another star to help, hang out with us. Help wanted. But yeah. I wanted to know uh, since you uh, four years you have a, you have a degree in music. Oh boy! Yeah. And you do play the cello. Uh huh. Or you did? You still have your cello? Yeah. I want to know if on the very last episode you record <laughs> in Pennsylvania with no, us. I no. want you. To, I want you to still be on when you're down in Florida. Yeah. Uh, Can you bring the cello and do Game of Thrones? Uh, and make us all weep yes. on the last episode. Do it. Please. Do it. For me, dude. Here, here is the only thing that I will consider doing. Okay. Uh, if you hound me and remind me to, I may record something at my place alone. Oh, you can't do it live? I, I will live. not play live in front of you guys. No Why? way. I want to be over here like <laughs> no. crying. He's, fucking, he's leaving us. <laughs> I thought we were his best friend. I haven't touched that thing in like six months. Oh. Oh, I mean, you can still play it. Yeah, it's I've played it since I was six years old, so I, wow. it would be all right, but I don't think I could do it live. No? But it's only it's, well, it's live. Just it's us. just us. Yeah. Uh, it's not like I'd be making funny. What if I uh, plug in the bass uh, and I'll, I'll play along with you? Mm. It'd be like the last, mm. well, you know. The last rock concert that the Marks put on. Well, maybe, maybe we never put on maybe a rock we look concert. To so do a, a recording outside of the podcast and then play for everybody. Let's do it live. I'm gonna do it live. I don't want to do it live. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss this for sure, Mark. Off air. That would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. We're that's, that's, to, that's we're going to try to convince you. Yeah. Is Game of Thrones coming back on? Mm, I haven't heard. Yeah. It's the uh, fall? I haven't heard. I don't know. I haven't heard a specific date that yeah. it's coming back, and I'm kind of getting antsy, not yeah. knowing. But but Walking Dead did come back. We yes, didn't t- did did. We talk about that yet. I don't know. It's been okay eh, so far. Been, uh, uh, yeah, we won't go down that I'm road. I'm so yeah. far behind. I just don't even yeah. care. Yeah, I'm kind of. I in, told I, you, Glenn died, and I was just like, "Peace out, no. bitches." <laughs> boom, boom. No, it doesn't matter anymore. Glenn's dead. My life is over. Aww. There's so much to live for, though. <laughs> Glenn was the only thing Maggie to live for. <laughs> and her baby. Oh, yeah. Spoilers. And my baby. <laughs> Is that a song? Yes. It's a good thing you got a guitar, because I don't think singing was going to work out too well. <laughs> Just kidding. Wow. I should have did my, uh, my uh, very overused joke. You know, hey, what'd you do with that money? Oh. Uh, what money? The money your mom <laughs> gave your singing lessons. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! See, no, my mom didn't pay for singing lessons. My mom just paid people to be my friend. No, Ooh. which is the truth. Right? I feel like uh, <laughs> she forgot to pay me this month. No, you, listen. Let me tell you, my I'm mom pretty sure she cracks did that, right? me up. Yeah, I gotta tell you guys. So while I was home over the weekend, um, usually I try to talk her into making it like a big dinner mm-hmm. that I haven't had in a while. Like my favorite thing that she makes. It's stuffed cabbage, but for some reason up there where I hail from, we call them pigeons. It's not no. pig- It's like, it's ground beef. It's just ground beef. Um, but she couldn't make it when I was home because she didn't have an oven because her oven doesn't work. So Uh-oh. my dad was like, okay, you can get a new oven. And while we're at it, we might as well get a new range to put in like a stovetop. Wow. And um, so she got them, but. She had the ones that they had were very, very old because they've been in the house for like 33 years and they were in the house even like at least 10 years before they moved into the house. 
Um, so they're stainless steel. And they just don't make them like they used to. Yeah. So they just got black. Well, my, now my mom's like, well, the, but, but the black's not going to match the kitchen cabinets. I, got, <gasps> I have to paint the, cab- the cabinets. <laughs> Ma- they, they have beautiful cabinets, like built in, like, they yeah. don't build them into the house anymore. They bring them from outside. Right. Right. Like these, you can't, you can't take these out of the house. They're yeah. built into the kitchen. But my dad is like all up in arms. He's like, you can't paint these kitchen cabinets. You can't paint them. You can't paint them. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and so my uncle was like, no, no, she could do that. I was like, oh, mom, I'm going to get you on Pinterest. You can do lots of stuff on Pinterest. <laughs> so she had off of work on Monday and um, she actually had some weird rash on her hand. So she went to the doctor. Mm. Well, then she played hooky on Tuesday. <laughs> she had a doctor's note. But I was texting. Well, she texted me in all capital letters, and she was like, "I love Pinterest. I'll be painting a lot of things." <laughs> Two hours later, she texted me again, and she goes, "You can paint upholstery, refrigerators with chalkboard paint, countertops, etc. You can even make a wine rack from an old desk." <laughs> <laughs> I know Pinterest was like yeah. obsessive when I started it. Um, you started Pinterest. No, I'm sorry. Oh, when I started, when started on, started Pinterest, on Pinterest, yeah. Pinterest, okay. Uh, I literally was spending like hours on it. Like I, if it was we, if they still had a dog. If she started Pinterest, do you think I would have fed you lentil tacos right, right now? Yeah. We've been doing some would be drinking hams. Yeah. Like if they still had a dog, she probably would paint the dog. Oh yeah. She's painting. Some she's getting, she even texted me yesterday. She was like, "Oh my god, I can paint my bathtub." <laughs> She's going crazy with the Pinterest. Oh, wow. boy. I've created a monster. <laughs> oh. <gasps> monster. How long did you plan that joke? <laughs> <laughs> well, she was taking notes. I earlier. actually texted her that. that was I was like, good, I've created a monster. Well, you know, it, uh, that's awesome that your mom's inspired, being creative. Um, which brings me to, uh, we had a phenomenal interview with uh, filmmaker Rebecca Fieschi this week. Uh, and if you want to get inspired... Uh, be creative. Listen to the interview. Um, Watch she's stuff. a phenomenal filmmaker. Mm-hmm. She's got a, a short film going around the uh, a festival circuit right now called Bad Heads. There is a French title to it. I can't pronounce it. I'll, uh, you just listen to her pronounce it because I would butcher it. Mm-hmm. I absolutely love Bad Heads. Um, it's kind of what... Uh, we made a black and white movie. It is nowhere <laughs> near uh, this level of... Uh, of Quality, inspiration, yeah. uh, th- uh, thoughtfulness. I mean, it, it, it. I mean, just the way she can harken back to these nineteen twenties and thirties horror movies, and I don't know. Uh, she's extremely talented. Uh, here I go again, talking too much. It would be better just to listen to Rebecca yeah. tell her story. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a very very quick break. We're gonna come back into that interview. Uh, so guys, mm-hmm. let's go. This is your reptilian overlord speaking, commanding you to listen to Paranormal Punchers. Hear Mark and Dave talk about all things paranormal. It's funny, you'll like it. I command you to do it now. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and ParanormalPunchers.com. Okay, hey, we're here with Rebecca Fieschi. Did I get it right? Yep, perfect. Excellent. Thank you so Hi. much uh, for hanging out with us. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm also here with uh, our friend Dana Sink. He's an a excellent animator, does most of his animation on an iPad. He had the privilege to meet you down at a festival in D.C., so I thought it'd be great to have him join us uh, for this little hangout. My pleasure. So, uh, Rebecca, you're, the one movie you have going around the festival circuit right now, uh, it's called Bad Heads. I know it's got a French title, which I will not pronounce. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Mauvaise Tête. Uh, now, this one, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I love the 4-3 aspect ratio. I love the black and white. I love the whole throwback to like, like an old uh, 19-something horror movie, Frankenstein-esque. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 30s via MGM and Universal Monster movies were a great inspiration for this one. Yeah, I even enjoyed the uh, having all the, uh, the all the uh, what would you call those, Dana? The uh, oh, it doesn't matter. I forget. But the title <laughs> card, the beginning, and all the credits. Oh, uh, the introduction. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah. just like the old movies. Boy, I, I just could not get that word out. <laughs> uh, but 
where did you get the inspiration for this movie? Um, well, really, it came up from a couple of things. For some reason, I had this image of a woman with a 1920s bob haircut standing next to a giant uh, dresser with severed heads in the drawer. Okay. And I don't know how that image came into my mind, but then I started to play around with that idea, and I guess the... Um, being an immigrant in in New York City and kind of a loneliness you can feel there sometimes, even though it's always really busy and you're always surrounded by all sorts of people, were an inspiration for this uh, lonely, strange character. And um, also the fact that, uh, you know, there's this very expected idea that men love to... Um, have several women and several love affairs, but then society kind of expects women to just want to find the one and only Prince Charming. But so I had the idea of this woman that did not fit this expectation and wanted to switch men like she would um, switch her outfits. Mm -hmm. And she did this by <laughs> digging up the men <laughs> and making... <laughs> yep. I, and I really, that, I mean, that was uh, so twisted. I really, <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. Thank you. Now, um, you know, when did you get your start making movies? I read uh, something on your bio, like very young age, 11 years old. Okay, so at 11 years old, I kind of realized I wanted to make movies, but I, uh, I sort of wrote little scripts, but I didn't really do much. I only started, um, I knew at 11 years old I wanted to move to New York City to make movies, but first I moved to Paris to study film. And then, uh, yeah, um, once I got my bachelor's degree, I moved to New York City and start, started doing a lot of hands-on in school over here. And that's when, you know, I really get, got started. So that was around uh, 2010. Okay. And uh, what what movie inspired you? What just kick-started your uh, enthusiasm for all of this? Oh, Edward Sutherland. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, now, back to uh, Bad Heads. Uh, how long uh, did that take to make? How long was the production on it? So we shot for five days, and I think I had the idea. I think I wrote the script about a, a year, a year before that, and then I had um, about, I guess, three months of pre-production and then six months of post-production. Wow. You know, and one thing that stood out to us, even to uh, Alicia, uh, the costuming. Yeah. Which was phenomenal, I will add. In the set design. I loved that. Thank you. I, uh, me and the team are really proud of costuming and set design because we really... Uh, we really wanted it to look like the 20, 20s, 30s, but we really had no money. So it was um, kind of a hard guessing game and playing around with, um, you know, a lot of looking on the Internet. What could we found for a cheap price and what could we kind of stylized in a way that would look good and not cheap on screen? I think the black and white really helped and having a very strong a very strong cinematographer very good with lights really helped create the, the right atmosphere is, the, the lighting is absolutely phenomenal and and you know uh it really it really um complements all the actors incredibly the acting is so strong in your piece it, it um you know your, your films kind of bring this love of making movies you know, really kind of underscores what making movies is all about for me personally with the, 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 the set design, the acting, the lighting, the cinematography, um, and, and, and just the overall, um, you know, it's, it's a horror film, but it has this, 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 this under level of energy that is fantastic. And I, I uh, commend you on it. It's such a beautiful uh, film. It's a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, and you said uh, you had a low budget, but I feel like with your set design, the costuming, it 
it didn't look like it had a low budget. It it really didn't, especially when she was out digging up graves <laughs> with the rainstorm and everything. We, we need to talk about the rain. Can you, can you can you tell us about you know? I, I was looking at the one actor that is playing the dead gentleman, and I'm mm -hmm. watching the rain pelt this gentleman in the face, and he's holding so still and doing such a phenomenal <laughs> job. Can you can you talk about that scene a little bit for us? Uh, yeah. So that scene is actually my favorite. It's my uh, my favorite as the result, and it's also my it was my favorite to shoot. It, we actually shot that in a friend's backyard in Brooklyn. So the um, the uh, tombstones are all made out of cardboard, and, mm -hmm. um, and the rain is actually which looks amazing. Is that we just use a good old hose, backyard hose. Um, I think, yeah. It, again. If it wasn't for the cinematography, it could look very different. I think the really the cinematographers on this on this piece are really bringing up the um, production value. So, since you're talking about the cinematographers and you've you've mentioned them a couple times, mm -hmm. uh, how did you find them? What was your process in finding these talented individuals? So, I actually worked on this one. We had two cinematographers. Uh, one that did the um, the cemetery scene and one that shot everything else. Mm -hmm. um, the one that shot everything else is uh, Dominic Civilli. He's really an amazing cinematographer, and I had worked with him on my previous film, Two Sisters. And I actually met him while I was working in the film school. He was also working on and off um, as a teaching assistant in a film school for a 35 millimeter camera while also, you know, starting off as a cinematographer. So, and the, um, the other one, the one that shot the cemetery scene was a teacher of mine in film school. And it was really fun to, to reunite with him. His name is, uh, Arsenio Essin. Nice. So, yeah, I really kind of use people that I knew already. Um, so. <clears throat> yeah, the uh, the one you just mentioned, uh, Two Sisters, was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, loved uh, it. And, and, yeah, so surreal um, and so different mm -hmm. than uh, Bad Heads. Uh, where did you come up with that idea for that, that short? Um, so that one was very much about, um, again, not being... You know, um, being surrounded kind of by a, a lot of people, but maybe not the right people and constantly feeling like you're doing something wrong. So that was, I know, it's kind of, comp <laughs> I'm not used to explaining the story, how I mm -hmm. came up with it, because it kind of, kind of took a lyrical uh, side to it while making it, you know, having no dialogue, making it very... right very much about the visual. So um, my approach to kind of jealousy and um, self-hatred and how it was projected, you know, the way you feel about yourself might be projected on how you view other people. That was kind of the original idea, I guess. Yeah, very... Oh, go ahead, Dana. Um, sorry. So just out of curiosity, why horror films to explore your avenue in expressing yourself? Um, I guess because I, I really love horror films, especially, um, older horror films that are, you know, much more about visual atmosphere. Um, and I feel that horror films are kind of a great expression of, you know, the dark unconscious that lays in kind of every human mind, but that we repress. In real life. Yeah, and I agree. I'm a big oh, yeah. fan of the old black and white horror films. Even to the point where I made my own uh, Fishman uh, horror film. Because I'm a huge uh, fan of uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, nobody's ever going to see it because it's, oh, yeah. it's not good. But, you know, I still did it. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Bad Heads, that's still going around the festival circuit, right? Uh, yes, it is. Is there ever it's a point... Screening oh, weekend. go ahead. Now, uh, uh, no, yeah. When will that uh, be available for people to watch on Vimeo? So, it's 
So I am thinking of putting it available on Vimeo um, this coming fall, uh, depending on how it uh, how it goes with festivals. I still have a few festivals lining up. And then, oh, also, I am going to be doing a crowdfunding for my next film in April, and I will put viewing Movistat as an incentive on this one. Oh, okay. So short amount of time in April, it will be available online. And the one that uh, you're going to crowdfund, I th- that's called Sylvania Grove? Yes, correct. Uh, what's that about? So that is um, about a troubled girl who follows a magical being into the woods where her fears take on fantastical form. It's, uh, this one is much more fantasy than horror. It's still pretty dark, but the inspiration on that one would be more um, 80s fantasy film mm-hmm. well, it's in a- which, uh, which often little boys were the the stars and when i was a kid i was like why are these always little boys are little girls not cool enough to have both parts so now i'm making one with a little girl instead excellent I, I would say that just having watched your stuff the the one line that really tends to connect all of your films in my opinion is that there is a um very surreal quality no matter what the subject matter is or, or even what the plot is um, and I think it probably has to do with the cinematography, somewhat of the subject matter, but more than anything, just the way the information is prevented, presented for the viewer. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. I like it. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, you also have a, you kind of have like a web-ish series, is that right? Yes. Do you want to um, talk about that for a second? Sure, yeah. So that's the uh, Suicide series, which I did in uh, 2012. It was um, I was treating those kind of as an exercise to keep shooting all the time until I was on a bigger shoot like the Two Sisters. Uh, I wanted to keep practicing and learning about how to tell a story uh, without dialogue before... Um, before getting into dialogue and everything, because while I, um, my thesis film had a dialogue and I think that completely ruined it. So I feel that dialogue in film can be an amazing thing, but it needs to, it needs to be done well and it takes a lot of learning. So I thought, let's learn how to tell a story visually first and then learn how to add dialogue. So, um, the suicides here are really just little snippets of these women lives. And, um, yeah, I was, I was thinking about women in, in different place and time or, and what, um, what would lead them to take their life. So I, it was kind of a little, you know, human study at the same time. I like the idea of practicing something, but, uh, but also at the same time, turning out a product. And I think that's something that, that um, and this is coming from somebody that, that likes to produce work, animation, short films. But I, th- mm-hmm. I, think that, uh, I think that that idea is something that should be exercised more often by, by filmmakers is, is, you know, delivering a product, but also having the, the, the core of that project being practice, if you will, right? Or development, rather. I mean, we're we're always developing on the big projects, but there is definitely a different level of development that happens on the smaller projects. Yeah, and it's also really fun, and you don't don't have as much pressure, and it's really an opportunity to get to work with different people and, you know, see how you adapt to different situations. I think it's a really good exercise to do, and it's just fun. Uh, Rebecca, I think your work's incredible. Uh, it's so uh, excellent that you uh, took time out to tell us this, about your, your work. Now, when is your crowdfunding kicking off? It will kick off April 5th. And where will people be able to find it? So it's going to be on Seed and Spark. And uh, so it's going to be seedandspark.com, Sylvania Grove. Sylvania is S. Y L P H V A N I A and Grove. 
Okay, and I'll make sure I put some uh, links in the show notes for that so people can find <laughs> if they you. want to support you. Uh, I know we'll, Thank you we'll look, definitely looking to support you. Uh, like I said, your work's incredible. Um, and I don't want to take up any more of your busy time because it sounds like you've got a lot to do. Uh, but <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for telling us all about your, your thank work. You. Yeah, thank you guys have any other questions for her? No. no I, th- I think you guys covered a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for uh, producing work and keep on rocking out on that. That's for sure. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Rebecca, thank you so much. And uh, we'll hopefully thank get to you. talk to you soon yeah. and get to watch uh, the more uh, incredible work you produce. Thank you so much. I'm really, really happy to talk to you guys. Oh, we're definitely uh, very, very honored Absolutely. that you, you did this. So uh, take care, guys. I'll be putting uh, links in the show notes so you can check out her work. You can uh, g- get there for her crowdfunding and support this uh, incredible uh, filmmaker. Uh, Rebecca, take care, and I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you. Take care. All right. Hey, that was great. Rebecca, thank you again one more time. Um, Two more times. Thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your busy day to hang with us. Uh, Dana, thank you for coming down to hang out uh, and and hang out with Rebecca. Um, You know, Dana, I would like to get you on the show. Yeah. uh, One of these times. Phenomenal animator. Again, I will post a link to Rebecca's um, crowdfunding. Uh, Go check it out. Uh, Support her if you can. She's a phenomenal filmmaker, and I can't wait to see uh, the next thing she makes. So, hey, why don't we take a quick break and come back with a... Are we doing red flags or are we doing a super fight? What are we doing? What are we doing, guys? What should we do? Wait, have we what made do you the full do? circuit? What do you do? Have we made the full circuit of red flags? I don't know. Have we all Has been... Has everybody been on a date? I think so. Yeah, I think Because I was the one on a date yeah. with you two last We can night. do it again. It doesn't matter. After the break, we'll figure it out. So, hey... We'll be back. Trick or Treat Radio is a phantasmagorical spin kick straight through the heart of pop culture, navigated by the Deadites. We are the world's greatest electroshock band. We destroy monsters, we drink booze, and we win championship belts. If you're not listening to Trick or Treat Radio, here's a taste of what you've been missing. There's three guarantees in life. What are they? Death. Taxes and Trick or Treat Radio every Friday morning. This is one of the most convoluted movies I've ever seen in my life. I'm fucking trying, man. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, yeah. It's like he took a shit on a pile of shit. But you shit on him right. for liking what he likes. Yeah, well, it's my job. This uh, podcast is now banned in Germany. <laughs> it's a me, Giovanni Lombardo Radici. Shut up. I call bullshit. I demand someone to bring me the face of Lindsay Lohan. If I had genitals, I would definitely bang her. Oh, wait. Is she a great big fan person? You just hit the jackpot. This is a weird movie, huh? It had action. It had suspense. It had great characters. It had great acting. I'm going to strangle you with my jockey short. I don't like mobster movies. All right, well, here's my take. You're a sick fuck. Thank you. Now shut the fuck up and let me talk. Have you ever seen 2001? The okay. box, right? The box and the monkey. Available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and trickortreatradio.com. Hey there, my name's Dynamo Mars, and I like beer, good buddies, tacos, movies, and booze. And that's why I'm here. So come on, grab a chair, and welcome to the Punch Farm Podcast. Keep on punching! Welcome back. (laughs) We're going to play a round of Red Flags, maybe two. I don't know how it's going to go. Red Flags is a card game. It's an excellent party game. It's Mm -hmm. also... uh, Mm -hmm. Made by the same people that make uh, another favorite game of ours, uh, Super Fights. Super Fights. So tonight, it is oh. n- Nikki. <laughs> Your beer just splooged. <laughs> I'm sorry. Her what? Her beer splooged. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. It went everywhere. We're on a date. I just got in the mood. You know? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys. I keep burping over here, so I don't know who actually <laughs> yeah, wants who to go wants on a date. Me. Well, Nikki is the single for this evening. Yes. Or always. Or always, I guess. (laughs) Uh, Nikki. Well, let's see (laughs) who who at least uh, capture your heart tonight. Oh, boy. (laughs) Uh, Mark, you going first? Uh, Certainly. (sighs) Hello, Nikki. Oh, gosh. Um, (laughs) 
You know, I'm just a regular old Joe. I'm pretty good at communicating. I'm a perfect communicator, you might say. A perfect <laughs> communicator. Oh. Stop it. Oh. But also, <laughs> I know all of the words to your favorite children's TV theme songs. Barney. <laughs> I don't know, whatever your, whatever your favorite ones are. I can sing it for you right now. What's your favorite childhood TV song? Happy, happy Halloween. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Ch- childhood TV. Childhood TV. Yeah. Gummy bears, Care Bears. Gummy There's a bears. lot of bears not, going on. I'm not that old. That's what you're bringing oh. up for childhood TV. Gummy I was bears. Like, gummy bears. I have a box Listen, of them at home. I've been I loved gummy bears. Yeah, I love I eating no them. I have no idea what gummy bears I mean, are. at least you could be like. X Men. F is. Don't even know what that is. I mean, I know what Uh-oh. X-Men is, but well, I'm, it's I, probably not, never Nikki. seen Nikki. the TV. Nick. What was that word you just I said? I really like Hey <laughs> Arnold. I don't know. Hey Arnold. Hey. Oh, is that uh, t- Anywho. All right, enough about me. I'm just a perfect communicator, and I can sing your theme songs. I think that's wrong. I, don't I think the, the first card, perfect communicator, that completely was shot in the ass after that. <laughs> But it's not my turn yet. Yeah. No. So I'll, I'll go now. Zip those lips. Nikki. Okay. Hi. Hi. Um, just so you know, I'm a really good listener. Ooh. And I'm very affectionate. Over. Ooh. So, just so you know. I like a little bit of affection. I figured you might. Yeah. <laughs> Get a room. <laughs> but wait, it's my turn. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, oh shit! <laughs> oh, I got the voice of an angel. <laughs> Is that an angel? Maybe not. Maybe one from hell. Oh, no. uh, uh. <laughs> I have the voice of an angel to sing you to sleep at night or to wake you up in the morning. But I'm also a professional chef. Mm-hmm. You want tacos? Best fucking tacos ever. That's Ooh. me. Hi. Oh, that might be a That's competition. <laughs> That's Nikki competition. Such a, such a All right. So now everybody uh, had their two white cards, which is our attributes. Now everybody's handing each other a red card, which is our foil. So I can't wait to see how... <laughs> I mean... Wait, 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 wait. So you're like, uh, you're, you're, you listen and you... I'm oh, that's right, Mark. I got to foil you. That's right. Uh. Yeah, pick out your red card. There you go. <laughs> There is your card. <laughs> I'm not good at picking red cards. It's <laughs> not even not bad. bad. Well, <laughs> I am. It might be. All like, right. So, help. Mark, yeah, uh, okay. tell, tell us your white cards again. So, so I, Mr. Good Communicator. I'm a good communicator, and I can sing some TV theme songs. That's stupid. Ugh, not, <laughs> uh, but on the side, to make a little extra dough, <laughs> oh boy. because I care about you, <laughs> I sell homemade wigs. <laughs> uh, uh, read the rest uh, of it. They're made out of pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I made, I sell, for clarity, I sell homemade disgusting. pubic hair wigs. <laughs> <clears throat> Who would ever put that on their head? Sometimes. That is rude. <laughs> He's got it, your you client get base. A, you have a client base, right? They wear pubic hair. You get to a head. point no. where you look for anything to cover that bald head. <laughs> Poncho over here is getting there, you know. How <laughs> oh, bullshit! <laughs> uh, you look great, bro. <laughs> How much? He's got wears? more hair than I, was, I do. I was just talking about <laughs> yeah. your, your haircut looks spot on. Thanks, man. Thanks. Can we go on a date? Yeah, yeah oh. before you go for it. Yeah. Um, Lish, Gross. your character and your uh, your Shoot. bad card. Uh, I'm a very good listener, and I'm affectionate. I like that. But I never stop playing the ukulele. Oh, that's not terrible. I know, right? It's yeah, just kind I can't of annoying. Pick cards, you picked the worst I cards. Picked terrible <laughs> cards. <laughs> well, <laughs> hi everybody. I had the voice of an angel. <laughs> oh. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a professional chef. Poor carnitos. Yeah. Mm. And uh, apparently, I'm also sexist. <laughs> Great. Ooh. Right. You know, it's not that bad. I mean, I, I, I cook all your favorite food it, 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 to the five-star mm. level. Right. You just need but to. You're but you're kind of a dick, <laughs> so. Yeah, but come on. How many times are you going to tell me a woman's place is in the kitchen? <laughs> right. Oh. oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. no. my <laughs> place is in the kitchen. I'm like, 
Can you get that bathroom clean? Because seriously. <laughs> that would be my pleasure, so, actually. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, <laughs> you don't have to experience the wigs. You don't have to mm. touch them. It's a side business that I have on my own. And I just go to my yeah, garage. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a murder. I mean, I go to the garage. Right? And, and what? And yeah, what's in the garage? All, all you know is that boxes go out and money comes in. All right, well, boxes I shouldn't be of jumping wigs. in here. That's your argument. Okay. I'm sorry. No, and I, I mean, it's a ukulele. They're pretty cool. Personally. They're not terrible. I know. I, I think my like brother them. has a ukulele. Really? My brother has like every instrument. I'm you bring your guitar pretty next sure week. my brother has one no. too. I'll bring my but ukulele. No, I do mean, have a ukulele. I do have a ukulele. <laughs> no. Of course I do. <laughs> Oh my god! You have to bring it then. I'll, I'll, I'll bring my. Youth. Okay. Have you ever heard a man sing an Italian uh, opera while he is cooking food in the kitchen? Nikki, he's Texas. I probably have heard a man sing something <laughs> that they thought was an Italian opera. Yeah, I mean, you're you 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 you're, you're looking <laughs> at this kitchen. one trait of mine uh, in a negative light. Like, come on, this is just just because I'm sexist. Oh, okay. Maybe if I uh, cross off a letter or two and uh, and and change this letter, I'm a. Uh, You're just I sexy. have the voice of an angel, professional chef, and I'm just sexy, not sexist. Mm. I can't. No. I can't. I can't rig the, the cards game. like that. No. <laughs> well, no. Well, you know, then maybe I'll just come over there and grab you by the. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there boy. we go. There we go. <sighs> <laughs> and your and your choice for a date. <laughs> Pretty clear. Have you have you chosen somebody? Well, I'm gonna tell you what. Okay. Mark J. Mm -hmm. Your <laughs> ability to sing my childhood theme song I, that, that doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, me. it's a Honestly, BS card. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even remember what my favorite show was as a child. I love you. That might be close. <laughs> <laughs> that might be close. Every night to bed. <laughs> oh. No. Um, but really, honestly, the pube wigs. Uh. No. no, no, I don't. I don't care. Eh. No, mm. it's a big red X. Yeah, she's not even talking about you, bro. And you know, <laughs> you got an X too. <laughs> I would never let anyone treat me mm -hmm. less than what I am. I know what I'm worth, and I would never let anyone treat me less than that. There you that. go, girl. And this I'm sorry, where, but... This is where you make like a $5 on the street <laughs> corner <laughs> joke right there. You uh. are not my choice. I was good until that card... I know. So you threw that card at me. Sorry, babe. Wrong. Really <laughs> playing the ukulele all the time doesn't bother me. I like music a lot. So and me too. You listen to me and you're affectionate. And sometimes I just want to cuddle. Alicia wins yeah. the date. Yeah. She always wins. Pretty sure she, wins. Yeah, pretty sure she won first <laughs> oh, round She's ever. the one who gave me the sexist card. Otherwise, I was like starting to level <laughs> up. Because I know damn well if you can make Nikki uh, fabulous tacos, even variety, uh, five days a week, you're in. Now, mm. I would like everybody I would like everybody to take a pause and think about this. The character that Mark rolled up here mm -hmm. and even doing that thing he just did like I love you. He made a a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's all right, so imagine he kidnaps you. Oh boy. And he sings you your favorite childhood theme songs in, in that weird voice he did. <laughs> and where's he getting these uh these uh, pubic hair wigs? I mean, he yeah. has people locked up in his basement. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So your date would be one step closer to that basement. I mean, I we say, almost... It would take you a really long time to make one wig if you were using your own pubes. <laughs> I don't know. The way he grows that beard. <laughs> how do you know? He, you know, he can just be like... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you won't go any further down that. <laughs> we won't go down that happy trail. <laughs> Why does everybody have sandy blonde hair uh. in your wig line, Mark? Sandy blonde. I don't know. What's that? Mm. It's brown, brown. That's know. not that, sandy blonde. the carpet match the drapes? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. So when I said sandy. That's not sandy blonde. Uh, well, I know what I was trying to say is 
I don't actually know. Oh, okay. That wasn't a faux I'm pas sorry. on my part. It wasn't <laughs> a faux pas. So what's, <laughs> what is punching? Kind of what is punching on the farm? This What's that phrase we use? I don't even. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> um, that was red flags. That yeah. was that was fun. Yeah, it was. Uh, Mark definitely just created a, a serial killer that we should write a movie about. Yes. Speaking of writing movies, mm. now, uh, the episode we had, uh, like I think it was 37 with the... the Spectacular, awesome uh, Cassandra Baker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, she inspires to uh, make another short film because we've made a few of them. Mark, I just showed you one tonight. Yeah, uh, chompy. And some super awesome listeners of ours, uh, our, our good bud, uh, Matt. Uh, he's working on a script. It's actually really good. He was like, hey, I got a script for you guys if you want to make it. I'm like, holy crap. I feel, like, I feel like that wow. inspired other people. Uh, now he's still working it through, sending me as he's writing it. So Matt, so far when I'm reading, I'm digging it. I don't know where it's going, uh, but man, I'm glad you were inspired to write this. Uh, Noah, he had an idea, definitely a slaughter fest, uh, kind of a spoof on uh, some a reality TV type show. Uh, that was cool. Again, it's like uh, I guess if we can't come with our, uh, an idea, uh, some super awesome listeners are like. Here Lazy some bitches. Here's an idea for you. <laughs> uh, that was that was very very That's great. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, that guys. That you guys were got that, that you were inspired. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, Matt. I can't wait to read the rest of it. I know. Just kill me. And we showed <laughs> uh, Mark. You got to watch uh, our six minute uh, black and white uh, yeah. monster <laughs> movie opus, Chompy. Tonight. Chompy. <laughs> it was quite quite fun. <laughs> what did you no. think of my acting debut? Oh uh, well, <laughs> actually, that wasn't my debut. It was a, it was it was no. nice. It was nice. Were you in something else? Not with you guys. I appreciate no. it. I appreciate you liked it, dude. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, and I, when I was talking to Rebecca, I said I would send her link to see Chompy, but I'm I'm a bit embarrassed. Please do. Uh, based on uh, the quality work she's putting out, I'm like, nah, I don't think she needs to see this. Yeah. I mean, it's... Oh, she will laugh at it. I know it's a comedy. She com- will it's laugh at it. Comedy. Yeah, yeah. But Mark's trying to convince me to put a, a link up. I think it would go viral. So, oh, you guys could check it out. I it think. is the story. Let me tell you this. Now, it. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how it came about. I'm pretty sure I talked about this before. Uh, one of my favorite movies... I just mentioned this in uh, when we were talking to Rebecca, but is the creature from the Black Lagoon? Uh, we live by Three Mile Island, Pennsylvania, in 1979. That almost had a meltdown. Yeah, and I was living here as a little kid, and everybody freaked out, lost their mind. <laughs> so I've always been fascinated uh, with uh, you know radiation uh, uh, mutating somebody, just like all my favorite comic books. Uh, uh, Spider-Man mm-hmm. bitten by a radioactive spider. The Hawk gamma radiation makes him. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, well, what if, you know, back in 1979, uh, it wasn't okay. Something did happen. And in my story, the backstory that's not in the black and white movie, the black and white movie explains nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but the backstory yep. is that some radiation did leak into the river, infected a fish, Caught by uh, this little guy, Jimmy, yep. uh, who caught the fish and, and ate it. His mom fried it up and ate it. <laughs> and he was mutated into the fish man. Yep. Then flash forward 20 years later, and that is Chompy. <laughs> He's just chilling. And if you watch the movie, apparently just chilling in a pair of jeans <laughs> and a button-down shirt. Yeah. <laughs> long hair. He's got yeah, long, greasy hair. <laughs> Chasing people, but looks like Cher. but for the wrong reason. Yeah. I feel like he's just he's a like every like share. He's misunderstood. <laughs> you thought he had share hair? A little share yeah. hair. That's good. I wonder what that wig was was made out of. Ew. <laughs> oh yikes! I did not. Uh, I did not sell that wig. By the end of this episode, Mark will either convince me or not convince me to post a link. Yeah. I want to get it on our Instagram and see what kind of views go up on it. Oh, it's so. It bad. would be hilarious. Uh, Nikki's hilarious in it. Uh, Dave. Yeah. Uh, Dave is Dave in it. Um, who else is in it? Oh, we're in it briefly. Uh, well, we're we Lish had to cut kills. that scene in because we couldn't pull off the blood squirting out of the creature's mouth. Yeah. So we had to edit in this scene where I'm asking you to explain what. 
had happened was right and that was so, your your short role but then yeah i had yeah. like a pretty i was kind Let's of the main role kill someone and laughs about it i do <laughs> yeah, it's a strange movie creepily it's, strange movie. it's it was meant to be just 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 a bizarre comedy yeah. you know what my whole my favorite part of that whole experience was what dave doing a backwards tumble set oh my god in, in the middle of the woods yes I mean, where we in missed it? Of, yeah, yeah, I know. We, we didn't even it. record it. Oh, man. That was uh, the best. Wait, he fell backwards? <laughs> All right. So we're shooting this one scene where Dave gets uh, sprayed in the eye by the fish man. And it's like acid or something. Uh, ah! I forget what was in the script. So uh, he runs away. And for the next couple of scenes, he's just in the background running back and forth going, ah. <laughs> ah! It's, it's the comedy part. Yeah. Pretty hilarious. But in, re- in reality... As he's running in this field, there's a big fucking gopher hole. Yeah. <laughs> he's, I'm so glad he didn't break his ankle. I know. Oh, my God. He hits this hole and just does a barrel roll. Like three <laughs> or four times, his day's body just rolling. You can hear the audio, um, but I had put the camera down. <laughs> and because <laughs> I was watching it happen, I put the ga- camera down because it was like, dude, you okay? And everybody else was like, in that situation, <laughs> you keep the camera rolling. I, I was like, Did you I was like, get but it? I was concerned. <laughs> uh, I guess all I do is just keep the camera on him and say, "Are you okay, bro?" And I'm still filming. This is hilarious. Yeah. This is going that on. That was fail also army. the movie that there's a lot that we uh, thought we filmed and we didn't film. Yeah. Uh, right, 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 right. A situation where you hit stop instead of record again but, uh, yeah. being the impeccable filmmaker that <laughs> i am and i know I, you know after again after watching uh the stuff pj made because cassandra's excellent work uh rebecca's ec- excellent work i would no longer ever say uh filmmaker i'd be like uh video <laughs> dumbass yeah video dumbass <laughs> i'm a video dumbass yeah, perfect sorry. thank you thank perfect you, uh, sorry so in chompy aka the fish man um, <laughs> uh, I got messed up with the record button uh, so sometimes when I would say action I would hit uh, the record but it was already running so I actually was hitting stop <laughs> so there's nothing but like my camera waving around giving direction and then uh, it cuts back to me going excellent excellent job thanks guys <laughs> and I missed all their acting so in Chompy, there's a scene where you could tell that my camera's just waving uh, in the air, and Nikki's kind of looking up, like waiting, like okay, when's he gonna say action? Right. Uh, I miss. I made her cry over the her dead fiance's body. <laughs> I think I actually kind of cried too, and that wasn't filmed at all. Oh, well, I, I I'm sure I could look back in the footage, and there's a, a scene where I'm going like, dude, that was excellent. Way to rock it. But I, <laughs> but I did not record any of it. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like we were driving to the next location. I think I had you scanning through the footage. Uh-huh. I was like, oh. I know. And I was like, uh, um. none of what, what these guys did. I could feel my butthole pucker. <laughs> I, was like, I, was, I was like, oh no. I just, I just, I just I fucked up. You just I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's you know that that sensation you get when you're like, I just messed oh, up. Oh shit! <laughs> that's awesome. But anyway, we did take what we we we, <laughs> <laughs> we did take the footage. We did make a short out of it, and quite possibly Mark's gonna convince me to put the link yes. on our uh, Facebook group page. We'll Instagram, see. probably just the group page. Instagram. <laughs> or, or apparently Insta- Instagram. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, you know, but I, I, I feel like I'd love to do something else with you guys. Uh, we keep talking to uh, uh, filmmakers. And I'm like, I, I, I want to do something really kick-ass and creative. Yeah. And not mess up. And make sure <laughs> it's always recording yeah. when people are, are, are acting and putting on uh, their best performance. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. I, it'd be fun. I think it'd be fun. If but I, don't, you're, if you're I can be involved in Florida. Or if it's still going on when I get back. 
I'll do you know, it. There's a good possibility of <laughs> filming. <laughs> yeah, because there's that film we'd started maybe a, a year ago uh, and yeah. got half done. Oh, that was uh, episode two of Paranormal Punchers. Yeah. Yep. Why do you think Paranormal Punchers is now a podcast? Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> filming, it just wasn't working out. No. Just rather talk about some silly paranormal stuff. Yeah. Because we just. Well, everybody anyway. has lives yeah. and, you know, things going on. So, yeah. not going to bust on everybody. And people changing their hair all the time. So, dude, yeah. my hair has not changed that much since then. <laughs> <laughs> it's Just basically kidding. stayed the same. I'm gonna pull up Instagram. Maybe right now a little bit and blonder. See what filming looked like on that day. I'm just kidding. Maybe Making a little bit blonder, but the cut is basically the same. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's I didn't not, yeah, go it, from it, like <laughs> bright orange. It to is not Nikki's to, fault. No, it's it's, not, not it's really fault. not. Mm. Yeah. Just kidding. I was just kidding, actually. <laughs> Just like Sorry. the uh, quest for karma. Your performance in scene one was spectacular. And I only filmed scene one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it took about three months. And then I was like, dude, I'm getting my hair chopped off, whether you like it or not. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder if I actually pay people. If uh, there'd be more dude, commitment. I don't know. pay me in tacos. <laughs> I always pay you in tacos. I, I mean, we don't, we don't <laughs> film things. Yeah, but the other people, I don't know if they want tacos. <laughs> Wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. Now, um, that's something we got to work on. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I know uh, we were going to do a little segment here quick uh, to end the show. Yeah. I know you were pretty stoked because uh, you just finished a book. So I it's did. our segment. Uh, what, what, what you punching? <laughs> or was Nor- what, what, what did Norm say? <laughs> what you punching? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, well, uh, which IE means, <laughs> hey, would you uh, read, watch, check out this week that you're so excited you want to tell us about it? Sure. Uh, I started reading this on Monday and I just finished it actually this afternoon. But um, hmm. Close Encounters of the Third Kind, a novel by Steven Spielberg. And he did a movie and it was all in the same year. It, it, it is 1977 when this book came out and that's when the movie came out as well. So it's a really uh, interesting read. I I know I've seen the movie, but it's been a very long time. And so I really want to watch the movie again just to see how close it is to the book. But uh, First and foremost, <laughs> I tell you, I did not know that uh, there was a novel. Yeah, he wrote a novel. Uh, by Spielberg. Right? Isn't that crazy? I didn't. I didn't know that. I, I own the movie. Uh, here's the thing. I own it on VHS. And if you would like to uh, kick back old school, we'll uh, watch it on VHS this weekend. Yes. Ooh. Okay. Oh my God. Yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's right. Bring him back the, you know, the VHS. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. a whole bunch of people. Yeah. It's a big. No, love. I, a big I love really did think it's a really interesting read. Uh, obviously, if you are uh, really interested in the story, the movie it'll take you like what less than two hours to to actually get the story so you know if you don't like to read then the movie's just fine but i think uh i don't know i thought the i love how the pretty book good. is uh from 1977 it is it's yellowed uh-huh. it looks old. i can almost but smell it looks awesome but it's but, also yeah. in really good condition that's why it's in great i, I condition. Kind of grabbed it out of your hand because it's in really good condition i know and I'm well i got it at second and charles and i oh, was just like condition. this is amazing i need to read this but yeah, 1977. That's amazing. But I love a good book and the smells. <laughs> I know, right? And it, it probably it does have like one of those old. It's like in your uh, dating bio. I love a good book <laughs> and the smells. That, that smells really good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! Nice. Because you know you read all the time, right? All the time. <laughs> uh huh. That's what I figured. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love it. Anyway, reminds me of my <laughs> wasted high school days. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, what you been up to? You know, same stuff, different day. Um, no, actually, <laughs> <laughs> so my favorite band just released a new song about a week ago, and I've kind of been obsessed with that. It's a band called All Time Low. All Ooh. Time Low. Yes. Um, I've been into them for a couple of years now. Um I only saw them once, but they used to kind of be more of a guilty pleasure band. And then the more I listened to them, the more I was like, I am in love with you guys. (laughs) Like, 
I am. I would totally fangirl if I ever got the chance to like be in their like vicinity, other than just a concert. Like, mm-hmm. if if I was at a coffee shop and they just happened to walk in, I would lose my shit. Oh. Um, but they have been a band for about fourteen years now. They're from Towson, Maryland, and um, they're like pop punk emo pop. So hence guilty pleasure. <laughs> um, they just put a new song out called Dirty Laundry. And they um, have been on a few different record labels, but just recently, um, well, I guess about a year and a half ago or so, they signed to Fueled by Ramen Records, Okay, which (laughs) is a pretty big deal for them, which is really awesome. And then they also just um, announced the they're releasing a new album in June called Last Young (coughs) Renegade. Okay. I'm really excited for that. And they're also going on tour in the U.S. again. And I just looked it up earlier. They're going to be in Philly on July 29th, which (gasps) is a Saturday. So I'm going to buy a ticket ASAP as soon as I can because I'm going to go and see them again because they're awesome. They, like, get really involved with their audience. I can't tell you how many audience members they brought up onto the stage with them. Yeah, it's really cool. Is this them? Yeah, it's good. Intense video. With it is an intense video. Opening the laundry mat as you were talking. Yeah. <laughs> I really like this song. And um, I before I listened to the song, I read the Instagram post about it. And the lead singer, his name is Alex Gaskarth. What he said about it, he said it's about leaving the past where it belongs and loving the people around you for not only their light, but their darkness, too. And oh, that's nice. If you guys, yeah. I don't know if you guys really know anything about my connection to music. I can always kind of pick out something out about it, and sometimes I feel a really strong connection with music. Absolutely. And this band, a lot of songs, really just have a really strong connection. With. That's very cool. Yeah. <coughs> they like, sound really good. Yeah. I'm I'm in love with them. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. That's really cool, Nikki. Yeah. Couldn't play too much of it. You know. Right, I know. <gasps> yeah. Ooh. Police. I know. <laughs> There's always somebody complaining. I yeah. know. Me? Yeah. Go yeah, for it. You? Come on, Mark. Give us something. <laughs> oh. What are you doing? What are you punching? Well, I've been punching a lot of YouTube. <laughs> in my downtime. Yeah. <laughs> and one game that I've been really enjoying watching is called Astroneer. It's a new game that's out. It's not quite perfect yet. There's a lot of glitches in it, but basically uh you play with your friends and you land on a planet and you harvest resources. Okay. And you use those resources to build new spaceships, new um homes, and different things and tools. Uh, it's very cartoony, so it's like fun, and okay. you can fall and like die, and uh-uh. you know you gather materials. But I've been watching probably a couple hours a week of people playing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I've been punching, but oh. it makes me want to like get a really great PC for gaming and, and get actually it play and, it. and play okay. it. But I, yeah. I've yeah. never really understood that. Watching video game. Why? Why people post videos of them playing video games? It's the. It's, it's a huge popular. It is huge. Crazy. It is huge, and I don't understand. Kooky. There um, are yeah. I mean, the people I, I my watch my brother are, does it all the time. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, yeah. Oh, I'm you know, I would. Lo- I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> message him. See who he's into. See if we watch the same. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. It's great. Mostly he just sleeps and licks windows. I, cool. you know, I, I feel bad. I feel good because I watch Since videos and every time I you watch a video, yes. I'm giving them, you know, 10 cents and helping them make an income. Okay. Good for you. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> Nothing new on my front. Still checking out the uh, MTV's challenge, oh, but yeah. Netflix has a new show. Coming out, I think oh. it starts probably started tonight. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's called the Ultimate Beast Master. Yes, it, it's a challenge show with some wicked obstacle course. Wicked. I cannot <laughs> wait to check it out on Netflix. Yeah, yes. it just came out today. Ultimate Beast Master. Ultimate Beast Master. Well, it has nothing to do with the uh, uh, the Beast Master movie, right? Uh, of course, of course. Yeah, which you probably. <laughs> 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 I knew it. So this it, it looks like a, another uh, Ninja Warrior type show. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. But I was always a fan of that. You know, I, I love that uh, the Ninja Warrior was taking place in certain cities, even Philadelphia, which we could have made it down. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, you just got to you got to train hard yeah. for that shit. I don't think training includes drinking beer and podcasting. No. Because if Probably it did, not. I would be the ultimate beast master. <laughs> <laughs> Very no. cool. I'm going to check that out this okay. weekend. <laughs> check it out. Yeah. Ultimate beast master. <laughs> what, <laughs> Nikki? I'm just, he's just laughing at himself. So <laughs> I'm just letting him have it. <sighs> yeah. Whatever. That's the end of the freaking moment. show. <laughs> I want to thank, um, I got one more time, Rebecca. Thank yes. you. Damn. Thank you for hanging out for Rebecca's interview. Uh, Ugly in the morning. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for, uh, you know, friending our boy Mark yeah, and taking care of him if he comes down to Florida. Yeah, I'm going to check you out. Uh, Matt, thank you for uh, the amazing script you're writing. Um, that, I, I can't wait to finish it. Noah, thank you for interacting with me oh, yeah. and giving me your ideas. And uh, anybody listening, hey, that's awesome. Thank you thank so you. much. So if you want to interact with us, hit us up, punchfarm at gmail.com. Get on our Facebook group. Go to Facebook. Type in Punch Farm Podcast. Our group will come up. Please join. Uh, we don't do a lot with it, but we interact and, you know, shoot the shit, I guess. Um, what else? Punchfarm.com for anything else about us. Thank you so much for listening. As always, we love you. And Nikki, what do we say? <gasps> Keep it all budget! <laughs> <Woo! Hey. laughs> <laughs> 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 oh! Beer down, beer down. Thank <laughs> you.